Okay, so welcome to our lesson on solving quadratic equations by isolating. So we'll start with a simple example, x squared minus 16 equals 0. So there's sort of two ways we could do this. One would be the way we're used to, which would be by factoring. So we'll call this method 1. So x squared minus 16 equals 0, and you would factor this as a difference of squares. So difference because it's a minus, and then these are both squares. So the first term would be x, and the second term would be the square root of 16, which is 4. One would be positive, one would be negative. This times this equals 0, which means one of them is 0. So x plus 4 equals 0, or x minus 4 equals 0. Um, and solve this one, you would subtract 4 from both sides. So x would be equal to 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And here you would add 4 to both sides. So 0 plus 4 is positive 4, and there are your two roots. The second method, which you might have seen before, well, we've seen it, we've done it in class, would be to isolate x, meaning get x by itself. So you're going to have to sort of deal with this negative 16. So you add 16 to both sides. These will cancel. 0 plus 16 is 16. And then you'll have to take the square root of both sides. Remembering when you do that, you must take the positive and the negative square root. So x would be equal to plus or minus root 16 is 4. So there's two answers there. x equals positive 4 and x equals negative 4. So again, we get the same answers. This is what I'd call, uh, consider sort of the most straightforward example, which you could do either way by factoring or by isolating. Another example, a little more difficult you might see, is when the equation is in vertex form. And you want to solve. So this one is not standard form, so you're probably not thinking that you're going to factor the best way to do this one is to isolate. So again, the th thing you have to deal with first is the negative 9. So we'll add 9 to both sides. Those will cancel. 0 plus 9 is 9. Now you're going to have to take the square root of both sides. Plus minus. So squared and square root cancel. positive, negative, square root of 9 is 3. Now this has created two equations, one where it's plus and one where it's negative. So I'm going to just solve those separately. Here's the positive one. Here's the negative one. So we will add 2 to both sides x will be equal to 3 plus 2 is, here I'll write that, 3 plus 2, x equals 5, there's one root, so I have 2 to both sides, so negative 3 plus 2, x is equal to negative 1. So these, therefore, the roots are x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. So these are the two roots to that equation, which you could check just by subbing it in. It should work out. Just as a slightly more difficult example, let's put a number in front of the bracket here. So again, we want to 
to solve this. So you're going to do it the same way. Add 32 to both sides. So you have 2x plus 5 squared equals 32. Now you're going to have to deal with the 2. So the way to deal with this 2 is to divide it because it's being multiplied. So these will divide out. So you have x plus 5 all squared equals 16. Take the square root of both sides here. Remembering positive and negative. Squared and square root sort of cancel each other out. So you'll have plus minus the square root of 16 is 4. So the positive one and the negative one. So we will subtract 5 from both sides. 4 minus 5, x will be negative 1 or subtract 5. This will cancel. So x will be negative 9. So there are your two roots to that equation. So that's how we isolate, solve by isolating. Another type of example you might see is one where it's not in vertex form. So let's say you have an equation like this. Um, now looking at this you might say, okay, I can maybe I'll, I'll try factoring. So can you do this by factoring? Since it's in standard form, that might be your first instinct. And the answer would be, well, you could try it, but the answer is going to be no. You can't factor this over the integers, at least, right? You try a product of negative 10 and a sum of 6. I'll leave it to you to try to find two numbers that do this, but you can't. There isn't two nice integers that mul multiply to negative 10 and sum to 6. So we can't do it by factoring. So maybe we can isolate. Well, in order to do that, we have to first convert to vertex form. And the way we do that is to complete the square. So you just have to remember that process of completing the square. We'll look at the first two. Take half of this and square it would be half would be 3 squared would be 9 but then you don't want to change the value so you just add 9 and subtract 9 and then there's still that negative 10 there right so we just sort of inserted this term now we're going to group the first three terms together and then the last two terms together first three terms we can factor as a perfect square. So plus three, it's always half of the middle term, and that would be equal to negative nine minus ten is minus nineteen. So now we've converted to a perfect or to a vertex form. So now we can solve by isolating. Just the way we did before. So add nineteen to both sides. So cancel. Zero plus nineteen is nineteen. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget plus minus. So x plus three equals plus minus. Now notice the square root of nineteen. That's not a nice square root. Um, so you could get a decimal right now. Like use your calculator, punch in square root nineteen. You're going to get four point something. Um, I'm going to leave it as a square root for now, and I'll change it to a decimal at the end. Um, but there's still two equations created, one the positive, 
So positive square root of 19. And the other one, the negative. So negative square root of 19. Um, now I'll just subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals square root of 19. Subtract 3. Subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals negative square root of 19. Subtract 3. Um, now you're probably actually going to want to... You could leave it like this. So sometimes we actually will leave it like this. But you might want to get a approximation of square root of 19. So x is, notice, approximately equal to, and then punch this in, in your calculator. I think you get 4. Point, uh, let me get a calculator. So 19 square root 4.4. 4. So we'll go to one decimal. 4.4 minus 3. So x is approximately equal to 1.4. Or, and then do the same thing over here. So negative 4.4. So x is, sorry, approximately. x is approximately equal to negative 7.4. Okay, so that's um, how we can solve a quadratic equation that was not factorable originally, right? And, you know, based on the answers, looking at the answers, this was, you know, some big decimal and this was some big decimal. Okay, definitely you weren't going to be able to factor because the factors would have had those decimals in there. So this is how we can solve by uh, isolating or square rooting.